Hello and welcome to CHRO Club. As you are aware, CHRO Club is a quest to reach out to the distinguished HR leaders and capture their moment of greatness. Today with us we have Piyush Mehta, CHRO of Genpact and he's so deserving to be a member of CHRO Club. Uh, Piyush, I'd like to ask you a question straight away and it's no easy question, let me tell you. How are you keeping up with the changing demands and complexity of a business environment that is continuously changing? I think the business environment has always been evolving. The difference now is that the pace of change of that evolution has, you know, has become much faster and will with time, you know, the impact of technology and the impact of digital and the impact of everything else. So in my view, I think pretty much most competent HR functions have been used to that evolution. What we have to continue to get um, comfortable with is the pace of that change. Uh, and I think it's important therefore to, um, you know, to have number one, um, I think it's very important for any organization to have purpose. Okay. In a, in a, in a context like this, that's the North Star which you navigate to, right? So to have a clearly articulated purpose provides you almost that, you know, it's, it's like a compass in stormy seas which tells you which way you need to navigate and how. The second thing is, I think you need to have learn, learnability uh, as an organization. You need to have agility as an organization. Uh, they become very important because as the pace of change increases, that's what enables you to be able to change. Yeah. So I think it's about having a purpose and it's about learnability and agility, which are becoming even more important, especially because look, the world five years out is impossible to predict. I mean, um, you know, unfortunately, no one was able to predict COVID uh, and the impact that COVID, COVID would have on the workplace, whether it was in terms of the discussions around hybrid or, you know, multiple other things, the, the, the speed with which technology evolved and all the stuff that happened after it. Agree. And, uh, you know, I couldn't agree less with you when you say the pace. The pace is what is, you know, is a crux here when we talk about change. But one thing is certain that, you know, when we move from first industrial revolution to second to third, the change took time. But here it is so instant, it is so rapid that, you know, you're gratified today with the kind of technologies that are coming out. So my next question to you is how are you leveraging these technologies? to reshape the dimensions of HR function? Yeah, great question. So look, I think part of being able to manage this well is about being able to figure that what is flavor of month and what is going to have meaningful impact. Okay. So if you think about, you know, various new developments that have happened in the function by the, either with technology or if you think broader, right? There are many things which have happened, which have been, you know, people searching for fancy headlines every month. And there have been certain things which have created massive impact. Okay. So I'll give you an example and some of these are controversial, but I, I, you know, just to make the point, let me bring that out. A few quarters back, there were discussions around silent quitting. I think that's what it was called, right? Right, right. It was no different from what was disengaged employees earlier. But someone just created a fancy name around it and then, you know, for several weeks, uh, there were a bunch of conversations, articles, podcasts around this stuff and there was nothing new in that. You know, fundamentally what it was saying was that there are people who are not engaged in their job. Yeah. Now, whether you look at Gallup data or other data, historically, one third of most working populations have been disengaged in what they're doing. What's new? Yeah. Right? It's just that we've given it a new label. There are various other such examples. And then there are things, for example, like the impact of generative AI on work, okay, which I think is going to be very, very powerful, okay, or other artificial intelligences on work have had very profound impact and will have even more profound impact going forward. So, you know, the point I'm making here in a little bit of a roundabout way is the most important thing here in my view is to be able to figure what's relevant for our organization what's scalable and what will continue to have impact for 
not just one week or one month or one quarter, but meaningful impact. Because look, we are a company of 125,000 people. Uh, and when we want to go out and do stuff, we want to make sure that it's scalable. So, you know, if I were to get specific on your question, we've, we've seen the application of technology and AI on our engagement uh, process. We have an internal, uh, internally developed AI chatbot called Amber. Okay, that actually helps us keep the pulse of 130,000 employees real time. There are several other examples of how we are using AI, for example, in Genome, which is our learning platform for the company. 40,000 people every month learn on Genome. Uh, and we found ways in which, uh, you know, we can leverage generative AI, for example, in adding capacity to the gurus and the master gurus who teach the curriculum, our internal gurus and master gurus who teach the curriculum for the AT skills, um, a bunch of the work that they were earlier doing themselves. Think about making question papers, uh, think about collating materials, think about a bunch of those things is now being done by generative AI. So very powerful applications. What is your go-to approach to develop leaders and senior managers within the system? Yeah, so uh, look, first of all, uh, I don't think you can become a leader uh, if you don't, uh, if you don't yeah. work well with people, right? If you don't know how to leverage uh, the skills and the talent and you aren't able to grow talent. That's number one. Uh, for us, it starts very early. You know, even if you look at our frontline managers, uh, now, there are two parts to this, okay? There is an individual contributor career path and then there is a team leader career path, okay? Uh, there are equally many individual contributors who are at very senior levels in the organization, okay? Uh, but even individual contributors, while they don't have to manage their own teams, today's world is not about managing your own teams. Today's world is about networks, it's about influence, it's about matrix organizations. It's about, you know, a bunch of other things. So this becomes equally important for internal contributors as well as team managers. You do not become successful if you're not able to network, right? We talked about this earlier. The world is changing so fast. You have to have the ability to look around corners and nobody has the skills, all the skills that are required, okay? I don't have all the skills that are required to be a great HR person. Right? And if I aspire to be a great HR person, which I do, then I have to be able to work well with a bunch of other people to be able to get those skills. Right? So, uh, number one, you know, you will not become successful if you're not able to work with people. And how do we, how do we, uh, you know, you provide uh, coaching, you provide early experiences, uh, you have people work in matrix organizations, you have people work in non-matrix organizations, uh, you have people who move back and forth between different, um, you know, between different countries. For example, in many cases, we have people who move from India to the US, India to Europe, uh, back and forth, vice versa, so on and so forth. So those different experiences. And then one of the things we measure our people on is how did you grow leaders in the system? Okay, it's a very important metric for us. Uh, and we constantly evaluate ourselves on that. And then separately, there are a bunch of leadership development programs at different levels. Uh, you know, at frontline level, uh, at mid-management level, and at top leadership level, all of which, which have been curated for the specific needs of our enterprise. Uh, so those are the uh, various people building um, uh, exercises. Those are, those are valuable points. Uh, Piyush, you started your career in 1990s. Uh, you started with HOL. Uh, now, in 2020s, you are with Genpat. So, you've seen multiple cycles of change and like you also eloquently explained, the change has always been constant. There is a lot of talk that HR automation is helping or enabling HR to pay, play a greater role in business. You know, develop a business acumen and help a lot more in business. Do you think previously it was not there when there was not so much automation in HR? How has HR's role in business changed over the time? Yeah, so I could answer that in two ways. Look, 
fundamentally hr's role has always been to support business i don't think that's changed and i don't think that should change it's always to support business that's what hr exists for right um to make sure the talent needs of the business are are fulfilled in the best way possible uh so in my view that's not changed and that shouldn't change how that gets delivered obviously has been impacted by the evolution of technology and the evolution of multiple other things not only just technology process learning um discoveries behavioral science so on and so forth so uh let's take an example to be able to serve business well we need to make sure that talent is engaged to be able to ensure talent is engaged you need to be able to measure talent engagement how did we do that earlier i mean all of us several of us would remember at least i remember in my growing up years used to have paper pencil engagement surveys which used to look at at the end of the year yeah. right Thanks. now i just gave you an example of our engagement survey today mm -hmm. which is real time across 130000 employees so we don't have to spend effort in the logistics exercise of gathering that feedback mm -hmm. we are able to spend effort and and direct that effort towards very focused value added work and i think you know it's a reasonably simple example of how technology has enabled us to serve the business much more when we were a part of ge the survey used to be shipped out from headquarters uh in the us right mm -hmm. and it used to go to different parts of the world and then it get collated and then sent back and, and that then, would be in paper format and then paper format oh and then it got you know it got enabled by technology and email but it was still the same thing right some version of survey monkey being used by someone to now real time surveys being done internally so you know look at the power in that look at the power of uh for example our learning engine genome uh the fact that it's virtual but it's contextualized to the needs of genpact okay uh and it allows for collective learning look one of the challenges of virtual is it doesn't allow for collective learning mm -hmm. number 2 is that you can pick up a bunch of things from learning platforms that are available globally but it doesn't it doesn't cater to the specific nuances of genpact or any other company now we've been able to customize all that and you know train <clears throat> i'll give you an example of scale we now have 70000 people trained in the use of generative ai over the last 8 weeks so that's the benefit that we've gotten with technology and all the other developments have, that have happened to serve business better i i'm just giving you two examples i mean think about the so think about more. analytics think about you know the use of data think yeah people analytics is such a strong way in which you can support business because it's people who are doing the businesses and you can get the decisions um you know one thought and there is a school of thought that when you do these pulse surveys okay and you get the feedback there is a certain section of people whose opinions do get marginalized because they are less maybe less than 5% people you know i mean people maybe with Uh, who are like uh, in the minority community uh, in an organization which could be just less than 5% you could have disabled uh, workforce you could have lgbtq workforce and sometimes these um, feedback surveys whatever they point out or whatever change they would want in an organization gets hidden because they it's such a small percentage do you face something like this and how do you manage that do no, i i tell you we don't face this because we don't use surveys in that way look you have to be very clear about what tool you are using for what mm. uh we are using engagement surveys to figure how our talent is engaged okay. right broadly but we have the ability because of the high degree of automation and the high degree of uh actually the way in which the data is structured around that uh around the responses you can filter by various different ways you can filter by gender you can filter by age you can filter by 
location you can filter so you have the ability to do that and know how people in different demographics or segments within the overall population are feeling number one so it allows you a very customized approach that said you know when you are talking about specific groups for example lgbtq uh, or other such specific groups i think there are different ways to do that we don't use our engagement tool to uh, you know specifically connect with them in that context there are affinity groups for example which exist in the company there is a full dei initiative which which exists in the company or there is a team and then there are a bunch of uh, initiatives that they have built uh, which allows you to uh, connect with these groups uh, to be able to then get their feedback and to be able to interact and then to devise programs accordingly you've been the best employer for the last 2 years uh, i think one of the international media publication had uh, kind of given you those accolades so what have been the pillars that makes genpact the best employer yeah so look we are very proud of um providing a platform where employees are able to achieve their own potential okay our employee value proposition to our employees is you know you will learn here and you will grow here um like nowhere else okay and that's our that's our aspiration and that's our our promise to employees right and we spend a lot of time on that so i will tell you i mean you know we are not the top paymasters in the market we don't aim to be the top paymasters in the market but we aim to be the best organization for employees to learn and grow uh and that's that's what our aspect so a lot of time and effort and energy and resources get spent on uh providing a learning opportunity to our employees but once you have people who've learned then you've got to ensure that you take care of their career aspirations as well this year between january and the end of august we have promoted 50% of all new roles that happened have filled through internal promotions so let me explain that you have entry level where we hire from outside okay you hire fresh or you hire some people with experience but above entry level whatever roles that open up in the company 50% of those roles have been filled through internal promotions that's something we measure ourselves on and that's something that's very important for us our aspirational goal is to get to about 75% and career mobility is such a strong tool for retention that is correct for 22 years you've been with jempact and you've grown up the ranks and your chro today what is your thoughts about people who are job hopping and shopping today and you know even tenure like 2 years and 3 years have become long tenures for the gen z population who are now in, you know increasingly entering the workforce i don't necessarily believe that gen z or gen x or you know baby boomers, uh, baby boomers or you know i don't think fundamentally any one particular segment is predicated to uh, or has a proclivity to work uh, lesser tenures in companies i i think it would be dangerous to generalize what has happened over a period of time is however that there are you know think about the gig mm-hmm. think about people getting more aware of uh, their own needs for work life balance uh, think about people getting you know in today's world people are more comfortable with working part time people are more comfortable with working gigs uh people are more comfortable with you know different ways of doing things and i think it increasingly becomes incumbent on companies like us to be able to understand that as opposed to have a quarrel with it okay mm-hmm. so i have zero problems with people moving across jobs faster now that said it becomes very important as to why is that happening okay uh you know if you're continuously having a run with bad people to work with maybe if you're continuously having a run where you're not learning in your job maybe if you're continuously having a run where you wake up in the morning and don't feel like coming to work maybe okay but if it is only intermittent then this is going to be a part of 
most of our lives in any day and forget working life. Even our personal lives are a reflection of that, right? It's rarely that you are on a high through every part of our personal lives as well. So I think a little bit of appreciation of that and introspection of that by each individual, um, I think would be helpful because if the changes are made just for the heck of it, for or the for heck a few of bucks, it. Piyush, you've given me direct success with all the questions that I've asked you. Uh, I just want to make it a little tough and challenging for you. So I invite you to join me for a rapid fire round. And I tell you, this is not going to be easy for you. Are you ready for it? Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> sure. So Piyush, my first question for you. You stayed in one organization for 22 years to grow up the ranks and reach the top. What is that one thing that kept you to the base? I learned every day. Great. One impression that the world has about HR that you would like to change? I think I'd like to make HR more and more business facing, even more business facing. I mean, every HR organization needs to be totally in, uh, totally connected to the business. Your leadership style in three words. Situational. Situational, situational, situational. Correct. Three words. <laughs> what is that one thing you wished you had time for? So I wish I had time to be more patient. Uh, I'm not a patient person. I, I wish I had time to be more patient. I, I copy that. I'm also like that. I wish I had time to be more patient. Um, how do you like to learn? By doing. Um, you know, for me, um, there are people who learn by reading. There are people who learn by uh, watching others. Uh, I learn best by doing. If you could go back to school, what would you do differently? Nothing, actually. I, um, I thoroughly enjoyed my growing up years and um, I wouldn't change anything. The best thing about being a CHRO in 2023? You know, for me specifically, 23 is as good uh, as any of the previous years have been. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think it's any different from what it was earlier. I mean, I've been reading a lot of stuff saying, you know, businesses love their CHROs much more and CHROs love their business much more. Uh, I told you I was fortunate. One piece of advice you would uh, like to give freshers starting their careers? Yeah, I, you know, I would say when I look back, I, I'll draw on my own career and say that every experience I went through, good or bad, I learned a lot from. So do not discount the learning that you get uh, from things, from everything that happens to you, around you and with you. Some inspiring role models that you've had in your life? For me, that would be Mahinder Singh Dhoni. I, I just, um, you know, love uh, the way uh, in which he uh, he leads, uh, the way in which he uh, you know he manages himself, the the humility uh, with the just incredible amount of talent that he has. Uh, I, I that's uh, a great choice. Totally agree. What makes Piyush interesting in life away from work? Actually, I'm pretty much the same whether I'm at work or otherwise. So. Uh, you know, there's there's not much difference. I'm uh, I'm a fairly ordinary person, so I, I I don't know whether I would say that. Uh, you know, you should talk to the others on on this one. <laughs> yeah, that's very humble of you. So you know, I can see reflections of Mahinder Singh Dhoni in you. Uh, not just saying for the heck of it, but it was great having you join CHRO Club and meeting you, Piyush. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Wonderful having this conversation. Thanks so much.